talking about the other cities, my tongue gets all tangled up. I want you to recognize tonight that before you tonight will be standing a man who has put his life on the line. He has had three attempts on his life for the cause of Jesus Christ. As far as I'm concerned, he's one of the giants of the faith. His faith is real. There's no pretension about him. Amen. He's as real as they get. Amen. I pray that you will get a blessing tonight from having been here, and I pray that you will bring five people with you tomorrow night Amen. to come and to hear Pastor Obi. He has graciously agreed to speak each night and on Sunday for our revival. And uh, we just ask that you give an ear to what he has to say. And Pastor Obi, we're going to come up. We're going to let you come up here in just a moment. I will say that we are going to pass the hat for him uh, at the end of the service each night. Um, and it will go to his work, uh, whatever we collect. And so, Pastor LB, will you come and share with us what God has put on your heart? I always want to hug this man every time that I've met him. He is a brother in Christ. Bless you. We love you, Pastor LB. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Hello. You are sitting like strangers. So what's going on? Are you with me at all? Wow. This is this is wonderful. This is a powerful congregation where everybody's watching any uh, every other person. Well, I want to thank God for the opportunity to be here this night. And I want to sincerely tell you that God is good. And his mercy is everlasting. I may be a stranger in America, but I'm not a stranger in the house of God. That's why I'm introduced as a, a brother. I'm your brother in Christ. We are the same in God. It is one Christ, one God, one Holy Spirit. And of course, by the time we get to heaven, there will be no black, there will be no white, there will be no Jew, there will be no Gentile. All of us are going to be one in Christ. And to God be the glory. Thank you. you can just sit it down there for me. I want to start by telling you that you have every cause to glorify God, every cause to love God and to serve Him. Pastor Bob was trying to say, you know, when I come to America, one of the things that baffles me is here is a country, a people with almost everything they need. But it looks like they're always needy. You may not understand what I'm talking about. I see a lot of people, they have food, they have money, they have education, they have house, they have everything, but they are empty. They are hungry. And I want to let you know that God has blessed America. Amen. But the people in America can only just say we bless God for what he has given to us. But they have not shown in their character that really they appreciate God. Now, when you cannot worship God, 
when you cannot praise God, the Bible says, clap your hands, O ye people. Sing unto the Lord with joy and clapping and rejoicing. Sometimes you come to the church, you discover that people are just like they are strangers. I want to tell you that in Nigeria, we rejoice in serving God. We are happy that God saved us. We love him. We glorify his name. In fact, in my country, when you come to church, you will see a big sign, switch up your phone. You don't come to church and you are, you are meddling with your, you know, you are, what do you call it, uh, phone. No, you don't do that. Because you cannot serve two masters at the same time. When you are serving your phone, you cannot hear God. So when you come to church, put your phone by the corner. When you finish, you can pick it. Whatever business or whatever, you can meet it. So tonight, I want you to prepare your heart to hear from God, not me. It's not all about me, but it's about God. It's about his kingdom. It's about you. It's about the love he has for every one of us. So tonight, I want you to open your ears and your heart unto God. You may not know what God has for you, but I know what he has for you. He loves you. He cares. He's interested. He wants to know your desire to serve and to love him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight. We praise your holy name. There is no one like unto you. You are the Alpha, you are the Omega. You are the king of the kings. You are the lord of the lords. You are the president of the presidents. Because even the president of the biggest and the highest country in this world, United States of America, calls you lord. Calls you the God Almighty. Father, you are the governor of the governors. You are the owner of the owners. Tonight, we are before you. With you, all things are possible. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for the grace of God. We thank you for the anointing that breaks the yoke. Lord, I stand here tonight as your representative as your servant to present the word of life, the word of grace, the word of power. I pray tonight, O oh God, let every grave be open. Let every, O oh God, hard ground be watered. Let whatever is that is holding anybody here captive, release him or her in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I stand here to declare that Jesus is Lord over this congregation, over this arena, over this place. Father, I declare that tonight, Jesus might be glorified. Jesus might be honored. Jesus might be lifted high. Jesus might be, oh God, worshipped in every ramification in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I select the powers that be, principalities and powers, forces of the darkness. Hear the word of God tonight and bow in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I take authority over anything, whatever, that may want to in any form or way hinder your people from hearing the word of God. I command and put them under subjection in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God. I present myself before you as your servant, O oh God. Use me as an instrument. Bless the people, O oh God. Make me a blessing to all. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, can someone help me? Please, Bill, can you read for me Ezekiel chapter 37 from verse 1? You have Bible. 
Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1. Ezekiel. Yeah. Okay. 37. Are you hearing now? Did are you with me? Oh, so who has glasses? Can you read, man? What, what she's saying? Okay, Ezekiel 37. 37 from verse 1 down to 14. Yes. Can I read it? Yes, you can read. Okay. But loud, so that others can hear. Third, third 14. Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 down to 14. Did you understand? Yes. Yes, reading from verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me. Mm -hmm. Son of man, this is what the Lord God says to the land of Israel. And then the end has come on the four corners of the land. The end is now upon you. I will send my anger against you and judge you according to your ways. I will punish you for all your detestable practices. I will not look on you with pity or severity, but I will punish you for your ways. Are you sure you are reading Ezekiel? Ezekiel 37. 37, 37. 37? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> okay. The hand of the Lord was on me. Good. <laughs> and he brought me out by his spirit and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. Good. He led me all around them. There were a great many of them on the surface of the valley, and they were very dry. Okay. Then he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? Mm -hmm. I replied, Lord God, only you know. Good. He said to me, Prophecy concerning these bones, and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is what the Lord God says to these bones. I will cause breath to enter you, and you will live. I will put tendons on you, make flesh grow on you, and cover you with skin. Good. I will put breath in you so that you come to life. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. Good. So I prophesied as I have been commanded. Mm -hmm. While I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together. Hallelujah. Um, Hallelujah. As I looked, tendons appeared on them, flesh grew, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. He said to me, prophesy to the breath. Mm -hmm. Prophesy to the of man and say to it, this is what the Lord God says. Breath come from the four winds and breathe into these slain so that they may live. Mm -hmm. So I prophesied as he commanded me. The breath entered them and they came to life and stood on their feet a vast army. Mm -hmm. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones, the whole house of Israel, look how they say our bones are dried up. And our own we perish, we are cut off. Therefore, prophecy and say to them, This is what the Lord God said. I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. Thank you, Jesus. And lead you into the land of Israel. You will know that I am Yahweh, my people, when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. I have spoken, and I will give you the declaration of the Lord. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Amen. Now, the Bible says that the hand of the Lord came upon Ezekiel and took him to the valley full of bones. And he said that the bones were very, very dry. Today, God gave me a message to present to you that is titled Hope in the Valleys. Amen. Hope in the Valley. That's what we need. Hallelujah. Now listen very carefully. By the grace of God, I am here today to reaffirm to you, to reconfirm to all of us that are here, that number one, the word of God is true. Number two, that the word of God is inspired. 
Number three, the word of God is authentic. Four, that the word of God is infallible. It cannot fail. And number five, I want to tell you tonight that the word of God is reliable. You can lean on it. You can depend on it. And you will not fail. And finally, I want to tell you that the word of God is powerful. The Bible says that the word of God is powerful. It's sharper than two eggs. It can recreate. It can form. God said, let there be light. And there was light. That's right. And everything God commanded to come came to be through the word of God. So tonight, I want to tell you, if you go to the book of Hosea, chapter 12, verse 13, the Bible says, by a prophet, God brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet, he preserved them. Just one prophet. God brought Israel out of Egypt and preserved them by that prophet. I am here tonight to make a declaration. As a prophet of God, I'm here to prophesy unto you that because the God whom we serve is the living God, that because the God whom we serve is a loving God, that because the God whom we serve is a faithful God, your enemy, the devil, who hates you. Yes. The enemy, the devil, who is looking for every means and method to destroy your life, right. has no power to kill you. That's right. Has no power to destroy you. Right. Has no power to do whatever he wants, except you allow him. That's and I want to thank God this night that God has asked me to declare that your destiny is not in the hand of the devil. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Your destiny is not in his hand. It's in the hand of God. And because it's in the hand of God, I want to declare to you today that is hope in the hopeless situation. That no matter whatever you are going through today, no matter whatever you are passing through today, there is hope yeah. in that hopeless situation. Yeah. The Bible said in the book of Corinthians chapter 13, the last verse, he said that every other thing that is going on and happening and taking place, they will all pass. That there are only three things that will what will stand and last. He said, one is faith, two is hope, and three is love. He said, these three will abide. And I want to thank, thank God because God knows what he is doing. Between faith and love, you have hope. And the word of God said that this hope is an anchor. And that is to say, when you anchor your life, when you anchor your faith, when you anchor your love and hope, you can stand no matter how much the storm of life tossed you, drives you. When there is a hope, there is life. When there is a hope, there is future. When there is a hope, you can stand. When faith crashes, hope will hold it. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you are getting what I'm trying to say. Many, many times our faith will seem to be crashing. Because what we see, because what happened to us, because what goes around us seem to be contrary to the faith we have. Yeah. What we are seeing seems to be like what we have had is no more what it's supposed to be. At that time, when your faith is shaking, the only thing that can keep you is hope. 
The only thing that can keep you stable, just like a sheep that is anchored, can be carried by the wave, move left and right, up and down, back and forth, but cannot be carried away because it is anchored. And I am here this night once again to tell you that there's hope in the valley. There's hope in the hopeless situation. There's hope in that thing that you think, oh, I am finished. God is watching. Can somebody say amen? amen. <laughs> I'm sorry. In Nigeria, we say a lot of amen. So if I'm saying it, please don't be offended. That's the way we do it. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> so this night, the Bible said in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, he said, believe in the Lord your God, and you will be what? Saved. Amen. Believe in his servants, and you will prosper. I want to tell you tonight, I am a prophet of God. I am not arrogating that to myself. I am called by God and I know it. Amen. Since 1981, I have been preaching the Bible, the Word of God. I have gone through things in my life. And I have proven that the word of God is true. And like John the Beloved, I'm speaking tonight with every, you know, assurance that that which I had, that which I have seen, that which I have tested, I can declare to you tonight that God is light. And in him there's no darkness. Amen. If you believe in him, no matter whatever happens, you will survive the tide. You will survive the troubles. You will come out of every situation because God is love. And his message is everlasting. I am here by the grace of God to announce to you, to give you an assurance that God it has not forsaken you. It may, be, it may be looking very, you know, uh, I don't know how I put it, but I want to tell you that God has not forsaken you. Tonight, I want to tell you, when you read the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37, verse 11, can somebody help me to read? Ezekiel 37, verse 11. Anybody who sees it can read for me. Verse 11. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can anybody read? Then he said to me. Then he said to me, yes. Then he said to me, son of man, mm -hmm. these bones are, uh, are the whole house of Israel. Okay. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, mm -hmm. our hope has perished. Mm -hmm. We are completely cut off. <laughs> Now, he said, son of man, these bones you hear and see, they are the house of Israel. And what do they say? We are gone. We are finished. So I want to let you know today that the condition of the Jews, as at the time Ezekiel prophesied unto them, was very, very hopeless. It was a hopeless situation. Number two, they were oppressed and depressed. You know, when a man is being oppressed, the next thing that follows is depression. And today, a lot of people are depressed because they are oppressed by demonic forces. Yes. They are oppressed by powers of the darkness. Yes. They are oppressed by situations and circumstances around them. And for that reason, they are depressed. And when depression comes, discouragement follows. And when there's discouragement, sometimes people can even kill themselves. Sometimes people can, you know, decide to go into drugs and so many other things because they want to come out of depression. But I want to tell you that drugs will put you into more depression, into more trouble. As, because the more you take it, the more you get into more trouble. God is the only way out. And that's what I'm here today to announce to you. Number three. 
they were very beaten and battered. You know, sometimes there's a way somebody will be beaten and battered. Now you see that everything about you is completely down. So many times you see a lot of people going through such kind of situation. They've lost their job, they've lost their home, they've lost their loved ones, they've lost so many things, and it looks as if to say there's nothing again remaining for them. Beaten and battered. Israel was in that position. Number four, they felt forsaken and forgotten. He said, we are gone, we are forgotten. Now, I don't know, sometimes as a Christian, sometimes as a, a person, you look like you have forsaken. You know, you have been forgotten. You have been kept by the corner. Everything turns to be around, I mean, against you. And at this situation, you are struggling. You are struggling. But you just, it, it, it looks like nothing is working out. That was what Israel was going through at that, at that time. You know, number, uh, number five, they saw nothing but darkness, grief, and sorrow. At this very period and point, in their lives, they saw nothing but darkness. There was no light anywhere. There was no hope anywhere. They saw nothing but darkness. It was all grief. It was all sorrow. And they were just on like that, groping in darkness, groping in all kinds of, you know, problems and situations, circumstances, and they were just like that. Number six. It was a period of defeat and failure. I don't know. Have you ever felt defeated in life? Have you ever had failure in life? You see, oh, at that time, my God, as if to say the whole world has turned upside down. You hate yourself. You hate everything around you. You begin to, I mean, you, 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 you look at yourself and you feel like, what am I living for? Because at that time, what has made you to be who you are, your pride and your ego, as a man, have been taken away. That which is the hope and you know what you are looking for, what you are leaning on, has been taken away. When a man is defeated, he goes home humiliated. He goes home crushed. He goes home, I mean, completely and totally devastated. That was the situation of Israel at this time. Number eight, hmm, they have accepted to give up and die. At that time, they surrendered. At that time, they just put everything down and say, let us just die. And that's why the Bible said, the bones were very, very dry. They have given up. They have lost hope. They have no vision, no focus. Nothing again was going on. Very, very dry. It was a dry situation. It was a time they cannot continue the journey anymore. It is a time they felt, oh, just like it was in the time in the wilderness. When they met terrible situation, they said, in fact, let's go back to Egypt. Why should we continue this journey again? The God who brought us out here has forsaken us. Moses that has come to bring us out is in the mountain and we don't see him again. Oh, let's make a God and go back to Egypt. Sometimes like that it happens. You feel like quitting. You feel like moving back. You feel, oh, what has brought me to this place? And that's what the situation of the Israelites at that time. Hmm. And I want to know, or I want to tell you, that it was a black and dark moment for Israel. And I don't know, what of you? Are you going through such challenges in life? Are you passing through such kind of situation? 
Listen. Just wait for a moment. And the Bible said in this depressed situation, in this hopeless situation, behold, God emerged from nowhere and went to this man called Ezekiel as a prophet. He picked him. And the Bible said he took him to the valley and said, come and see what is going on. Can these boys live again? What would tell you that Ezekiel was part of the situation? He was confused. He said, God, thou knowest. He didn't give any answer. <laughs> Does it make sense? Amen. No, you know, he said, Lord, thou knowest. The question is, can these bones live again? The answer should be yes or no. But he said, thou knowest. And I want to tell you that sometimes, when... You know, reality is opposite the profession or what you speak or what you preach. Now, let me say it in a better language. When reality is different from the promises, God has promised you good health. And here you are struggling with sickness. Here you are struggling with bad situation. But he said, by the stripe of Jesus, you are healed. And then you begin to wonder, is this word of God true or not? God has promised you, I will prosper you. And you discover that this time you are lack almost bankruptcy. You don't even have what it takes to maintain your house, maintain your car, maintain everything. And the word of God said, I will prosper you. At that time, you are dancing between two opinions. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. Whether what you agreed upon, what you are professing, what you are teaching, what you are preaching, whether it is true or not. Ezekiel was one of them. And he said, Lord, thou knowest. And what was it? God said, now prophesy. Hallelujah. He said, prophesy. And I'm here this night to tell you that the only way out of your situation this night is to prophesy. The only way out of your own condition this night is to speak the word. That is the only way out. He said, prophesy. Speak. Say something. Begin to speak to your situation. Begin to speak to your condition. Look, let me tell you. Very many of us will not understand. But I want to tell you the truth. The Bible is clear. Hallelujah. The word of God is true. I want to make you to understand tonight that the only way out of your situation is to prophesy. The words of your mouth are words of prophecy. More especially when you speak the word of God. The Bible says that the word of God has the power to recreate. The power to do, to change, to bring things to life. And that was what was going on. In the book of Proverbs 18, if you read verse 21, the Bible said death and life are in the power of what? Hey, church, are you following me? In the power of what? In the power of the tongue. And he said, those who know it, those who understand it, those who are aware, they will reap the benefits. What are you saying? What are you saying to yourself? What are you saying to your children? What are you saying to your family? What are you saying to your situation? What are your words? What are your confession? What are you saying? Many, many times you say, oh boy, I'm gone, I'm finished. When you make such confessions, you are finished. And many, many times you discover that when a Christian is speaking, he's speaking for flesh. I hope so. I hope. Why not say I believe? 
Because when you say you believe, that means you really understand that what you are saying is true. The Bible says with the heart we believe, and with the mouth we make confession. Salvation is now full and complete. For God to save you from every situation, you have to believe in your heart, and you have to confess it with your mouth. When you say it, you see God performing. You see God coming through. So tonight, I am telling you, the only way out is your mouth. In the same Bible, the Bible does understand. In the same book of uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2, he said, you are snared by the word of your mouth. You are trapped by the word of your mouth. You are roped by the word of your mouth. What is the confession you are making? What are you saying? And I want to conclude by telling you that everything that lives, everything you see has ear. Now let me tell it in a better way you will understand. Whatever has name has ear. Whatever has name has ear. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Jesus spoke to the wind. And the wind did what? Obey. He spoke to sickness. And sickness obey. He spoke to the demons. And the demons obey. He spoke to the tree. And the tree obeyed. Anything that has name has ear. And I want to tell you that even that your situation, that your circumstance, that your trouble, that thing that you are going about carrying as a big load, it has a name and it can hear. So today, begin to talk. That's the way out. You don't need any other magic. You don't need any other thing. The Bible says, I will honor the words of your mouth. So by the time you begin to prophesy, just like Ezekiel, by the time you begin to speak to situations, you will see things changing. And I want to tell you, don't worry yourself. It is your duty to speak. It is the duty of God to do it. Ezekiel did not go to work any bone. He did not go to bring bones and begin to join them. The Bible said, he said, all down bones, hear you the word of who? The word of the Lord. Bones begin to join one to another. And the Bible says, as he spoke, as he prophesied, bones lifted by themselves. There was a noise. There was a rattling. There was a movement. And they began to join bone to bones. Everybody begin to look for the one that belongs to him or her. And they now joined by themselves. It is not your own duty. It is not your own making. God has the ability. Come on, let somebody say amen. amen. God has the ability to change your situation. God has the ability to save you. God has the ability to bring you back to life. God has the ability to heal your sickness. God has the ability to change the situation and everything around. All you need to do is speak the word. Amen. The centurion said to, the, to Jesus Christ, he said, look, I am a man of God. I said to this man, go here, he will go do this, he will do. He said, look, you don't need to come to my house. Speak the word. Just speak the word. I, you know, I implore you tonight, speak the word of God. From today, begin to speak. Speak to yourself. Speak to your soul. Speak to your spirit. Speak to your emotion. Speak to sickness. Speak to disease. Speak to failure. Speak to anything around you. Maya Katandaba. Speak to demons. Command them and they will hear you. Because all you need to do is to say it and believe it. And I want to tell you that if you say it and you believe it, you will receive it. Because the Bible says, if you will ask anything and will believe it, God will bring it to pass. Let us pray. Please bow down your head and let us pray. I don't know whether God has spoken to you at all. I want to tell you that the hour has come. This is the time. Tomorrow is not in your own control. Today is your own day. Can you, the Bible said, whosoever that will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
Why not just say, Jesus, save me tonight? That word alone can bring salvation to your doorstep. That word alone can bring deliverance to you. Just say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Save me tonight. Deliver me tonight. Help me tonight. And you see that God in his infinite way, infinite way, will bring his peace upon your life. He will come. I want to tell you, the Bible said, when you hear his word, when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of deliverance. God wants to deliver you from the chains and shackles of Satan, of the devil, of the enemy who hates you, who wants to take you to hell, who wants to make you make sure that nothing good will happen around you. But come to Jesus tonight and Jesus will save your soul. Jesus will deliver you. Jesus will heal you. Tonight, I want to ask, is there anybody here tonight who wants to make his way right with God? Who wants to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. I want to serve you. I want to love you. I want to be the child you want me to be. I want to give my life complete to you. Come into my heart. Is there anybody like that tonight? I would like to pray with you. If you are here, just raise your hand wherever you are. Just raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you. And God is going to do a dramatic, I mean, bring a dramatic change in your life tonight. Just raise your hand wherever you are. This is the time God will want to really do something in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Just raise your hand up. Wherever you are, you want your life to be refreshed. You want your life to be saved. You want to completely and totally surrender. Just raise your hand. I want to pray for you. This is the time, the appointed time. It is the time that God is calling. It is the time that God wants to do something. No matter how depth your life has been into the grave, God will raise you up tonight. We'll speak the word of life. We'll speak the word of grace. And God is going to bring you out tonight. He will, he, he will make you whole again. Just raise your hand as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you tonight. It is not by power, it's not by might, but it is by your spirit. Lord, I have spoken your word. It is you that touches the heart of man, that calls conviction to come into the heart of people. Holy Spirit, I hand over the young, the old, into your hands tonight. The children, the teenagers, the adults, I hand over to you, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus, that Lord, you reach out unto everyone. Deliver them from all the plans of the enemy. Lord, as Israel, we're looking hopeless. And in the midst of hopelessness, you came knocking at their door. Lord, I pray that tonight you will continue to follow every one of us, even to the place of our boat. That all the crooked things in our lives, all the hopeless situations in our lives, Father, I pray tonight you will handle them in the name of Jesus. You will deliver all without any exception. Lord God Almighty, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to share your word. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You've heard the word tonight. Yes. 
today is the day when we've heard the voice of the Lord. Today is the day, it's the time to take action on what God has spoken into our life tonight. David's going to get the sound about right. <laughs> and we're going to start another